it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last session in this combined game of Innovation and Tempest, this Innovumpus or Tempovation, whichever you prefer. I think I think what you prefer probably says a lot about you as a person. Um, yeah, I won't go into why, but I think it probably does. So think about that. Think about first which name you prefer, you know, Vumpus or Tempovation, and then think about what that might say about you. You know, Vumpus, Tempovation, you decide. It's a very important choice and one that will follow you for ever and ever. This game isn't going to be going on forever and ever, however. I think it's about to be done. Um, last time, at least in my mind, uh, I kind of moved from just sort of thinking about the overarching game and how it works together to really get it involved in um, the drama of what's happening on both the continent and the boards. Remember, we decided last time that the continent would refer to um, the Tempest board, so we're not going to call that the board, we're going to call it the continent, and the board would, would refer to the different stacks of cards in innovation. So Lefty definitely woke me up um, through, uh, through showing to everyone that he could end the game pretty quickly. Um, so he, if you, if for those of you don't remember, he's got quite a few um, high value cards in his hand and he has the bicycle which allows him to trade those cards into the score pile. If he draws, I think, probably one more high value card, he can put them all in a score pile with his bicycle and then, you know, it'll take him a couple turns to get the achievements and it's just because it takes two actions, you know, it takes an action, one action. One Tempest action will give you two achievements, basically, that's how it works, because one Tempest action can give you two innovation actions, that's really the Tempest, which I think might be a, a weakness in this game. Um, have ideas in Tempest terms basically means you get two card draws, and there's a hand limit, so it limits it. And here, Have Ideas gives you two innovation actions, which are maybe a bit stronger than that. So those Tempest cards are, are pretty useful in terms of the Tempest board. I don't know, I, I, I feel um, like I haven't done enough testing on this game, and hopefully by putting these videos out here, someone else uh, would be able to test it. It wouldn't be a hard test to make. I, I would encourage everyone to have innovation in their collection. And Tempest um, is not well loved, and so it's usually designed for pretty cheap. And it's it's really not a bad game. It's a it's a good game, I think. Um, not one that totally fits with the way I like to play, but I, I know there are people out there who, if they um, gave it a shot, would enjoy it. It's one of those games, I think, that suffers um, from its own cover. The cover promises this civilization thing and it's got these all these times swirling together and it really doesn't feel like that and I think I I don't know I'm not a good marketer marketing's not not what I'm focused on but I think the marketing of of contained games is important and I think oftentimes they're marketed to um be something that they're not and that could hurt them in the long run if all these games say that this is a game about this and this is a game about this when really they're just games about themselves, um, then I think in the long run people are going to stop believing what, what people say. And there's that, but, or maybe they'll just keep buying into it and not realizing that. I, but I don't. I don't think that's the case. I think it's they're they're creating disposable consumers, and eventually they're going to run out of people. Maybe I don't know. Just a, just a guess on that. Um, so where is everyone else sitting? Uh, Smiley has two achievements right now. Terrible continent position, not a good board. Um, I think she has the card though that if she had the right symbols, she could stop um, Lefty right now. But she she doesn't have enough symbols. Lefty's got her beat and leaves. I think leaves is the card. The machines. I haven't looked at the board or the anything since last time. Um, let's see. Vic Spiegelman. He has a good continent position but a terrible board. So if Lefty doesn't win the game, I could see him being in a good place to uh, start scoring some achievements. Um, I, don't know, I, I, I feel like scoring is much, it's much, it's a more sure bet in the, on the Tempest continent, but it's slower. So I feel like maybe the, the, using the Tempest continent might be better early on. I don't know, but it gives you these these points that are also harder to be taken away. We'll see what happens with that, and again, I think this could use a lot more um, testing and tinkering. 
Um, and then finally, Roadrunner, who is our semi-finalist. She's the one who, you know, even if she doesn't win this, she's going to stay in the Protestant leg regardless. She's looking to close it out, though, and she's actually not in a bad position. If Lefty doesn't win, um, look for Roadrunner to have a good shot. One, she has one, um, one achievement already, so she's one-fourth of the way there. Two, she's got a good Tempest Continent position and a good innovation board, and she's the only person who has that trait. Um, I think Lefty has a, a better, uh, well, he has a better innovation board, but he's got a terrible um, Tempest Continent. And I don't know if this says anything about, about the size, the Tempest and the innovation being unbalanced or not. So we have um, Dick Spiedelman, who I guess is the one who's most focused on Tempest right now. There really wasn't one player, however, who was totally focused on the Tempest Continent. Uh, everyone kind of did a mixed strategy except for Lefty, who focused the most on innovation, and he's the one who seems like he could be winning. It'd be interesting to see how it bears out. I guess we should go see instead of being talking anymore. More Joe D'Agostino. I think we will get into where the tools are. There's a ton of material um, with his first three albums that I did to scratch last night. And we have the final day of um, creation, which I think will end out this sec section of the the tournament with um, it's called the last day so look forward to that at the end of this video in fact if you don't want to watch the stuff and you're just here for you know the creation album which is a fine album by Joe D'Agostino um probably the most efficient way actually would be to go online and you can just get it yourself or for free or well, it takes bandwidth and memory on your computer, but you could burn it to a, a CD. There's there's lots of things you could do. Um, it will take some sort of resource from you, um, either virtual or anyway. Or you can just fast forward to the end of the video, and I I, I feel confident in saying that I'm going to put it at the end of the video. We'll see. All right. So Smiley started off the round. She drew two cards, uh, innovation cards. Vic Spiedelman did the same thing. And so did Lefty. So we had an exciting start of the round. I told you it was going to be um, heating up last time. It really has. We had a lot of card draws. But these card draws are, there's more going on than just the drawing of cards. See, Smiley's drawing cards because she wants to stop Lefty. Bix is drawing cards because he wants to stop Lefty. And so they're just drawing, drawing into the dark and hoping they can get that thing they need to stop him from victory out of their grasp. These two have the most to lose. If they if they are out of the uh, if they lose this game, they're out of the tournament essentially. I mean, they can still go down to the losers bracket, but then they have to make it through outdoor survival, which is pretty deadly and difficult to control. Um, Lefty has the cards he needs now. He has enough points if he does the swap now uh, that he can take the next four achievements. Um, so the way they could stymie him is twofold. Well, there's several ways they could do it. Um, before his next turn, they could get cards out of his hand. That would slow him down. Um, also, if anyone gets enough points to take an achievement, that would also slow him down, but not by much. And the problem with that is he has a card that lets him uh, take cards out of people's score piles, which is you know, why people sort of turned away from the innovation way of scoring because he could just take them away and it's really hard to overcome his lead advantage. Um, crowns, however, everyone I think has more crowns than him. He actually has the least amount of crowns right now. So if he does the bicycle action, and this is another way people can do it, um, they can then throw their points into their score pile as well, or their cards into their score pile. So that's another way they can they can try to stop him. There's a few things they can do. Um, they could also, you know, do something to the bicycle card itself. If they can get that off of his board, then there goes a scoring opportunity. He's still going to have a huge age advantage, but people are, since there's a lot of card draws, everyone's going to be drawing from the age of exploration now, which is not too far away from romance. We'll see what happens. It is now Roadrunner's turn. Roadrunner uh, melded and used optics that let her take a random card basically from this pile, meld it. Um, it didn't have a crown, so she wasn't able to score. She was hoping she would be able to score something which would perhaps cause Lefty to use his vaccination and as one of his actions. Um, and 
and sort of kind of slow him down through distraction. Um, and then maybe it also gave her the chance of getting something that could help her against him. She was not able to get that, however. Um, Smiley did have something that she wants to try, though, and she is going to make a demand. So let's calculate her demand potential. So she's got nine crowns. Um, Dix also has nine, and she has more crowns as well. She has, I think, uh, eight. 11 crowns, so she has the most crowns, uh, Roadrunner. So the only person that's going to affect is Lefty. So she's demanding he transfers a non-purple card with a crown from his board to her board. Um, so he has to choose either his bicycle or his mathematics. Obviously he's going to choose his mathematics, although they've done him well. Um, so she gets the mathematics, and then he has to draw and meld a four. She's hoping you know, maybe it'll be a green card. Unfortunately, it's not. It's a yellow, and it gives him another crown. But, um, so then there's a secondary effect. You may display your green cards right. Other people have to decide if they want to do that. Roadrunner's the only one who could. She has green cards, so she wants to display them right. I think she might go for it, which lets Smiley then draw a this card. That was a tough, tough call by uh, Roadrunner, because Tempest cards can really um, affect how they interact, and she's right up against Smiley here, but everyone's kind of forgetting about the, the continent right now, and Roadrunner was aware that she's going to have to deal with Smiley if, if there's a problem, but she feels like she still has enough expansion room, and she has a stronger innovation board, um, and the Splay Right can be pretty useful in the long run, especially if she's going to, you know, just foiling this plot from... Um, lefty is, on, is only going to get him so far, you know, he still has quite a lot of potential. Dix drew two cards just in time for the countdown to begin. So Lefty is going to use his bicycle. He may exchange all the cards in your hand with all the cards in your score pile. Now everyone else gets to copy that if they want. It's a may so they don't have to. One of the interesting things about the innovation game is when it doesn't say may, um, even the dogma that might sometimes be useful is still imposed on the people who are stronger in that, in that icon and so they have to use it anyway. So sometimes you can do something that's positive for yourself that's actually negative for someone else who copies you, and plus you get the copy bonus. Uh, this is not one of those cases. Um, if it didn't say May, that, that this is the type of effect that could be not useful, depending on the circumstances, so it could be a card like that. But it's not. It's a, um, one that's useful, and so everyone has to decide whether they want to copy or not. She has the printing press. That does give her a right splay, but I think she's going to go for the score pile with the idea that it might distract Lefty. Um, Smiley has a couple cards that aren't particularly useful to her. So she's also going to go with the score pile, again realizing that she could lose these cards. And Big Beetleman is definitely going with the score pile. He's going to actually have enough now um, to take an achievement if he gets a turn. However, oh, and he lost. Ah, I forgot about that. He lost his ability to take um, take people's score pile. So that opens things up. Smiley's action with the Enterprise, I didn't realize that before, did a lot more than I had thought. So because that opens it up, there's going to be a, a lot more of a competition for these final achievements. Other people can get oh, I dropped some cities. Um, other people can get have a have a score score pile now without having to worry about Lefty taking it. Um, but he has the score now, and he is going to go ahead and take the medieval achievement. If he had another action, um, it would be a good time to take it. There's a government card in Tempest, which if he had that right now, he could totally clean up. Um, but the countdown is is commenced. Other people need to take either either his score or these achievements, or the game is going to be over very fast, and we'll be looking at a showdown between Roadrunner and Lefty, the blue baby. Roadrunner's got an interesting decision to make. She has to, because of her optics, she has to transfer a card to Smiley. Really, it's not a huge decision, but it's it's the difference of a point. So. Let's break down the decision for you right now. Um, so Lefty's got the biggest score, right? He's got 
7 times 5, that's 35, plus 136, that's enough to take several achievements. He already has one. If he gets three, he wins. Um, Smiley has two achievements, however, and so she's actually, achievement-wise, the closest to winning. Um, that said, she's less of a competitor than Lefty right now. Does she want to make uh, Smiley a little bit stronger in order that that she can t shut Lefty out because, you know, as, achieve as we go up in achievements, they get more and more expensive. Or does she want to um, not do that? Okay, so let's look at that Smiley's score because that's what she's going to be doing right now. Smiley has eight 11 points. So, I mean, even no matter what card she gets, Smiley's going to have to score more if she's going to take an achievement. Um, however, Smiley can score three points just by taking an action. Or two points, I guess that would be. So, hmm. She'd get, so then she'd have 13. She could give her 15, which would not be enough. Um, 13, what does she have? She's 8, 11. She could give her 16, 15, or 17, or 18 would not be enough. Yeah, I don't know. But she could have a card that lets her take two actions, and so then the 18 would be enough. I don't know, does she want to? I don't think she does. Hmm, let's take a look. Let's take a look at her card. This is something we gotta think about. Of course, I'm counting right here. Robert Redford, don't worry, smile. Okay, smile, smile, smile. Don't worry, smile. I think she would she would definitely rather spend time with Smiley than with Lefty. I think she's gonna give her the five. That might mean nothing, <laughs> but we certainly deliberated it like it did. Or at least had the potential to do so. Yeah, and I don't think it, it's really going to matter. It would have mattered if Smiley had a government card, because then she would have been able to take an extra action for sure. Smiley's going to try something else, though. She's going to make this demand that they that everyone transfers a top non-purple card with a crown from their board to her board. Now, this is a very risky maneuver, because, um, you know, Lefty's going to have a choice between his steam engine and his bicycle. There's no reason he's not going to choose the steam engine. Uh, the bicycle already kind of done what he wants it to do, but moving the steam engine lets him affect people's points again. Um, take away all the lowest cards in their score pile. Uh, so she's going to be uncovering that. And for what purpose? Let's see who she can affect first. So Bix Beetleman, 6, 9. She has 4, 10. So she's going to affect Bix Beetleman. Bix Beetleman's going to have to give her this translation card. Mathematics is covered up once again. We already determined Lefty has fewer crowns, and that hasn't changed. And he's going to move the steam engine over to her. All right. And then we have Roadrunner. Roadrunner she cannot affect. So she did that. And then she could also splay her green cards right. Uh, she doesn't have any green cards. But these guys get a draw and melt a four. So he gets a four. He gets purple splay is even larger. Um, that's going to... No, no one copied. Alright, and now she can do this card. You may meld all the cards in your score pile. If you meld one, you, you must meld them all. And then if each top card on her board has a crown, claim the world achievement. So she didn't do really anything to stop Lefty the Blue Baby, but she did take her third achievement. She's now at three. She gets one more. Smiley won the game. It's getting closer. I double check, and unfortunately, Bix Beetleman is one point shy of being able to take two achievements this turn. He was only able to take one, which leaves him uh, something to decide to do with his next uh, innovation action. He had to use one to do the achievement. Um, unfortunately, if he was to do this astronomy, which is what he would like to do, because his masonry doesn't do anything for him right now, probably not for the rest of the game. Um, it would give Lefty an achievement, and he doesn't want to do that. Regardless of the outcome of it, it would give Lefty an achievement, because Lefty would copy him. So he's got to just draw a card, which is, could actually help him in the long run. We'll see what that card is later. And Lefty can't resist. He's going to um, take one achievement, use one of his actions to take it. Well, let's see. Let's, let's, let's calculate. Yeah, I think he's going to just use one action to do an achievement here. That gives him exploration. And then he's going to use the next action to use his vaccination, and that's going to demand that everyone returns their lowest card in their score pile. There's going to be some fours here. I 
think every, I should actually double check to make sure he can affect everyone in that way. He leaves. I think he's still the Leaf Master, yeah. And then four is here, so a bunch of fours just got returned. And then everyone gets to draw and, draw and meld a six. And then he gets to draw and meld a seven, so let's do that. Draw and meld a six. Optics is covered up with machine tools. That's useful if you have something to card in your score pile. She doesn't. Um, draw and meld a six. Cyclopedia. Hmm. Alright, and then draw and meld a six. Cyclopedia is very similar to translation. That's nice for Vix. Pretty um, frustrating for him, actually. If if he had more light bulbs, he could take the achievement from astronomy without Lefty getting it. Um, that Lefty can, because he meets the requirements now, that Lefty can copy him for the special achievement. Makes it so that Lefty would get it first, because he does the action first. So Lefty had an interesting choice there. I don't know if you noticed. He had to. Ch he could have taken two achievements. He decided to take one and knock everyone back so that they'll have a harder time taking the next next two from him. So that gives him one more turn, and he would have one more turn regardless, right? One more turn, and he wins the game unless someone is able to stop him. Given that it's her possibly her last turn in the game, Roadrunner is going to try to do something to help. Um, so first she's going to use her banking to demand that everyone transfers a top non-greed card with a factory from their board to her board. Um, that's going to do a couple things. One, she's going to get all these cards, including the vaccinations. So there will be no more point drain from the blue baby lefty there. Um, that lets her splay her green cards right as well. That's not going to happen, but they all get a draw and score five. So she's going to get six more points. He's going to get six more points. And the blue baby's going to get six more points, which is not so good. Um, and then if any card was... Oh, no. So that's all that's going to do. And then she could do the demand again. What else does she want to do? So that was one of her... Half of her actions, basically. She would like to do this on the blue baby, but she can't because he has more leaves than her. I think she's going to try her physics, which is just a, kind of a shot in the dark, to see if she can get a card that can maybe help. So she's going to um, dogma this and see if anyone else can do it first. Um, she has a total of four light bulbs. Big Speedleman also has four, and I think Lefty also has enough. So they're all going to do it first. So Big Speedleman's got to draw three of these. Two are the same color, so he has to return the drawn cards and all the cards in his hand. That's too bad. She was kind of hoping to, to help Bix rather than harm him. Um, he has to return this card as well. And then the blue baby's going to draw this one. It's green. These two. So he gets to keep them. Actually helped him out. And then she's got to do it. She's going to be drawing three eights. And she's hoping for something here that can can swing things. She's going to get to keep them. Um, she actually gets another turn because she is going to use her government to let her do another action before anyone else. Another way that these cards can be really potent in this game. i got to look over these cards and I'll get back to you. And I think her luck paid off. She's going to use mass media. This is going to take two, two more actions. So she had to use her government. She's done for the turn, even though she was supposed to be the last one to play because Smiley went first. Government didn't give her another action. It let her just use her action more quickly. She could have also held an action, but she decided to do it this way uh, because otherwise she wasn't going to have time to do anything. So she can return a card from her hand. And I think she's going to probably return this card. Yeah. And then because she did that, she can choose a value and return all cards of that value from all score piles. So the value she's obviously going to choose is 7, which is the value of Lefty's cards right here. So they're all going to be returned. If anyone else had 7s, those would also be returned. So that is going to save everyone some time. Um, he still has the bicycle, though, so he might actually you know, be able to to come back pretty quickly here. But that's gonna at least, I think, buy everyone one more turn. She gets to splay her purple cards up as well. 
Um, and let's see if anyone gets to copy her. I don't think so. I think I figured that she has the most now. Yeah, she does. All right. Roadrunner, maybe save the day.